Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Raising the New Earth. Uh, this is your host, Noah Dory, and today our guest, our returning guest, is Dr. Kelly Carter. Uh, Kelly Carter uh, was a guest on episode 47, Modern Day Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine. Uh, Dr. Carter is a doctor uh, in acupuncture and oriental medicine, a certified active isolated stretching, AIS, a therapist, and a Tai Chi master. He offers a balanced approach to healthcare, addressing the mental, emotional, physical, and chemical root cause to disease. He also teaches seminars focusing on self-care methods such as Tai Chi and uh, stretching to empower his patients to take responsibility for their health and well-being. Welcome back to Raising the New Earth. Dr. Carter, how are you? Good. How are you doing, Noah? Good. It's good to see you again. Good to see you. A lot's happened since I saw you. Uh, yes. So uh, I think I was going right into, uh, I think I was going right to Italy right after I, right after our podcast. Mm-hmm. And, how uh, that? We, oh man, it was incredible. Like the best, it's the best trip I've ever taken. And uh, I mean, just as soon as I got on that plane, there was just a conscious shift. You know, I walk on the plane, it didn't hurt either. I walk on the plane on Delta going to Paris. And there's this beautiful stewardess standing there or flight attendant standing there. (laughs) And we connected like that. We're joking with each other. She's hilarious. And, uh, and we just talked the rest of the time. And we became we became friends. And, uh, and it just from there on, it just the you know how it is international travel you realize that you really realize that people do, they want to get along. They want to like be friends with you, you know, and they, they want to be courteous with each other. Yeah. And it's like, and that's the whole thing. And we just have, I just have the greatest conversations. It's like, I've known these people my whole life when I sit down and speak with them, you know, and uh, it was really beautiful. And, and just the, you know, we were, we were a group there. It's called global journeys. And it was with, the lifeline technique people, Dr. Darren Weissman, uh, who you, you'd met on uh, his seminar. And, uh, and so he was teaching with uh, Dr. Colby, who is uh, probably one of the smartest women on the planet. She's a, she's a scientist from uh, India, uh, a geneticist, and she was teaching up at genetics. And the things we learned, it was crazy. This meditation we did that was proven to turn around Alzheimer's disease from an ancient meditation. Uh, you know, that was the big takeaway I had but we were all on the same page for just to really raise our consciousness. And it was like from the first dinner we had with each other, we had a seven day trip in Tuscany and we went throughout all Italy, but we were like family from day one. Yeah, it was just beautiful. And everybody was on the same page. There wasn't a fraudster in the, in the whole group of 30 people or whatever. And, um, and so I taught Tai Chi so every, every place we went, every city we went to, we'd get off the bus and then I teach Tai Chi. And then we'd go on our excursions and then we'd have Tai Chi at night and different times and stuff. And, uh, and we integrate the lifeline technique. It's, I, I call it intentional Tai Chi. So it really drives the intention home uh, and really embody that intention as you're doing the movie meditation. But yeah, it really put me on a whole, you know, when you grab something like that, where it just shifted my whole consciousness when I went and one of the big things, I know we're talking about parasites, but I am excited about talking about this, but the, uh, the, the uh, parasites are so exciting though. <laughs> um, and so, especially when, if you're gonna talk about it, like while you're eating or something. Of course. Um, but uh, so we go and uh, you know, I, I had such a, uh, a great shift in, um, in my consciousness, my going, um, I just, the, 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 the community that we had established with each other. Uh, it's like when you do anything intensively like that, it's like, I mean, I wor- I've worked on films and stuff where I'd be with people like for a few months and they're, I was telling my friend the other, like, you're like a better, we're better friends than my friends, a lot of my friends from when I was a child. You know, when you share certain experiences with each other, it's really intense and enriching and really bonds you like that. Um, but man, I mean, just, uh, yeah, it was uh, fantastic. And, uh, and uh, the, you know, we're going from, you know, the United States is in a certain state of consciousness, right? And uh, it's like, my, my nephew explained, it. he goes, man, he goes, you know, think about like, the earth is like a macrocosm of what we are, right? So he's like, he goes, man, he goes, San Francisco is like the root chakra, right? 
it's all about me and sex and, and, and drugs and rock and roll. And then you go to the dawn of the Renaissance, you know, you go over to Italy in that area, it's the heart chakra. And that's what I felt when I went there, it really sh changed everything. And one of the big shifts I was going to say is that I was getting so caught up in the politics and the, the soap opera of the politics and the, you know, because I'm a solver, I want to like fix the world, you know, and so instinctually, I'm like, I'm a protector, and I'm going to fix the world. And so you want to know everything. But I realized how toxic it was. And I knew it. And it wasn't I wasn't getting out of the loop. As soon as I got on the plane, done, I just knew it was gone. And so I got rid of a lot of that stuff. I built my Instagram page, uh, all towards just, let's just be happier. Let's be better people. Let's how can we do that? You know, and, and so I have a tight that Tai Chi page, I, uh, I am um, it's the Tai Chi moment, the Tai Chi moment on Instagram. And so I have all these uh, clips and then we um, share that and, and just that, you know, cause it's just like, I, um, you know, in so many words of Einstein is there is no darkness. There's just lack of light. Mm -hmm. and so, and that's what really Dr. Darren Weissman always, he's always pushed that. He was actually the first one that shared that analogy with me and he flicked the light off in the room, you know, and like it really uh, had an imprint on my mind. And so you, you just, uh, re he just shines the light. Let's just do that. Let everything else take care of itself, you know? Um, but yeah, it's been a very, it's, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. And then a lot of growth since I'd, since I'd, um, since we'd seen each other. And I, and I really think that that, that on its own is a huge contribution to the world consciousness. Yeah. you being with like-minded people who want to empower other people raising yeah. your own vibration is such an yeah. add-on to the world that needs that much more light so you are doing your own part by actually yeah. participating in something as as amazing as that so kudos to you thank you thank you and what you know that makes me think too because we said like what do you want out of this we went around to everybody right and it's, so we're kind of setting our we're setting our intention and i said I just want to be authentic. I just want to be who I truly am. And I didn't know that, but that really was the theme of the whole, the whole plan that they had for the week is to remember who we are, right? Is to really remember. And because that layer of the onion, that overused uh, analogy is so spot on because those layers are not who we are. Those are protective layers and it becomes, it becomes who we, how we express ourselves, um, you know, out of protection most of the time but to really get down to the core of who we are is the big, big deal and i uh i said i just want to be authentic i go my worst fear is to be a phony i don't want to ever be a phony you know i really want to be who i am with everybody and so you know and not everybody's 100 percent because you go into these modes and you get triggered and you're like i have to protect myself here and i have to you know and, and stuff and you'll not quite be yourself but it, it's just getting closer and closer, you know, getting closer and closer to my core. And uh, so that's what I really experienced. It was really, really amazing. You know, no, I mean, knowing you for as long as I have, I never remember you not being authentic, <laughs> you know, but I think hand in hand, finding out our purpose, our true purpose on this earth is the authentic self mm -hmm. of the best representation of ourselves. So for you, you have never you know, been inauthentic. Well, I, I appreciate it. That being in the film industry has its, you know, it has a thing to it, right? <laughs> and uh, and that seems to where it be where it, it's the obsession for it is too much, you know, and that then draws you out of who you are. Yeah. So I've had those moments, you know, like that. It made me think of that when you said the um, the uh, about um, authenticity. Um, now I can't think of how, you, what, what brought that up, but you, uh, it'll kind of come back to me, but you, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, uh, yeah, it was, that's, that was what, what I was after and, uh, it all came to a head at the end and, uh, man, it was a great process. And, and so we're looking at doing more of these as well. I, I plan on, man, I, I plan on going to the next one that I can go to, but I, we're hopefully going to integrate this and teach this with the Tai Chi. Uh, and mix it like that. Yeah. Let me know. I, I may yeah. join as a nutritionist and uh yeah. Be, in, yeah. In, integrative medical doctor, hopefully. I know. I know. I, I hope so.
That would be amazing. I, I want like my, I you know want family and friends involved with all of this, and you know, and and look at like you can you can make them pretty fast, you know, and uh, like yeah. with uh, like Dr. Roy, who I think has he been on your has he been on the yeah, show? Yeah, yeah, he was on our show last week. Mm -hmm. Oh, was he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome, man. He's I great. work with his son. His son's a top tier tennis player in Barcelona. Got yeah. a big camp down there, and uh, so I I've been working with him and teaching him um, uh, stuff for his sports performance. That's that's incredible. You you are good people, Kelly. We're probably gonna <laughs> keep bringing you to our show. <laughs> All right, so, so we're gonna segue to parasites, okay. which is the parasites. topic. Of, but otherwise, we're gonna spend four hours. Kelly and I have known each other for. A while. <laughs> so we're gonna segue to parasites. The reality is that most everyone has some sort of parasite, even healthy people with no symptoms. However, we need to be mindful. Uh, and I've noticed with my own clients that viruses and bacteria are common co-infection. So it is imperative that we have a comprehensive process to fight pathogens in that process of fighting a parasite as well. Mm -hmm. uh, from my experience, children who don't wash their hands too often are susceptible to that. Adults who eat raw fish, undercooked meat, uh, not enough filtration system in the water are also at risk for uh, contracting parasites. But it can really ha happen to anyone. But adding a tier of having and being in poor health is basically opening the door for these invaders to establish themselves in our bodies and slowly feeding off of our inner resources. And mm -hmm. that on its own can cause nutrient deficiency, suppressed immune system, which can further um, perpetuate disease. So this is a vicious cycle. Poor health weakens the immune system, thus attracting more pathogens and bacteria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, what is your take on parasites and how do you test for parasites in, in your clinic? Well, um, how I test for parasites is the same way I basically I test for fungal candida. It goes a lot hand in hand with that. And that is I check and see if they have a pulse and I say, yes, they have a pulse. Yes, you have parasites. <laughs> so you're breathing. You're a human. You have parasites. Sorry, but you do. And uh, so I don't have them. I'm like, everybody has them. And it's like, uh, it's just, you know, think of like any kind of any species in the world that doesn't. We all have them. Every horse, every cow, every dog has parasites. And it just is what it is. And we're, you know, we're animals too. And we, we get them. And just that we have a way to deal with them uh, because we're humans and we have a different brain and we can think and we can intellectualize and figure stuff out and solve the problem. But the thing, like by definition, let's start there. Just parasites are organisms that live inside the host and intercept nutrition nutrients, uh, leaving the host with, with some nutritional deficiencies. But it's like, they're like vampires, you know, a vampire bat will latch onto a cow and he just lives off that cow. And, you know, he's draining the cow of the blood, right? He's just drinking his blood. Um, so these parasites are sucking the life out of us and they're really, really adaptable. Um, they're uh, very resilient and uh, they are, they're much more adaptable than we are as mm -hmm. humans. They've been around a lot longer than us, right? There was one that brings it up. So the oldest animal in the world is a worm. Right. They, it was frozen, right? 32 and 40, 32,000 years old, 41,700 years old on the other one, and they still could bring them back to life. Eating, going to the bathroom, these things are resilient, right? They're tough to deal with. And um, so we got to know what we're, what, we're, what, we've, what we're up against here. And, uh, and so it's not a, getting rid of parasites is not a one-time deal. You know, it's not like, oh, I did the parasite cleanse. I'm good. I do it every full moon. There's a parasite mm -hmm. cleanse I do on the full moon because uh, during the full moon, the parasites are more vulnerable, vulnerable mm -hmm. and they're more active, you know, and it's interesting because I, I have a guy, I'll, I'll go into this, but there's a parasite cleanse I do, but I had this patient, he was in this morning. And I mean, when he first started with me for the longest time, I'd figure it out, but he would just snort all the time just every, every five, 10 seconds, you know, he was snorting. It's like, what's going on there? I got to figure this out before he drives me nuts. 
right? And uh, so we we figured it out, and I got him using this uh, some parasitic um, anti-parasitic uh, herbal uh, decoctions through a, a nasal uh, flush, right? And so it was getting better and getting better. And then, wow, it's like, wow, I hardly hear you, you know, but it was still there. I go, you know what? I go, let's do the whole systemic parasite cleanse, not just in your nose. Cause he actually parasites came out of his nose. So you can see them come out. I mean, they look like little liver flukes almost They're They'll come out and they, they would come out regularly with him. So I go, you know what? I go, it's gotten better with this, but that's local treatment. I go, let's treat your whole body. So I go, I bet this is going to make a difference, you know, with, uh, with your, with your nose. Um, and so he did the full parasite cleanse, hardly ever snorting. Right. Then what comes up, he comes in full moon comes up again, right? This last weekend, I, I just finished it yesterday, the, the parasite cleanse. And, um, so he started, he started snorting again a lot, you know? And it's like he he could go days actually sometimes without the flush and it would still be fine. But what we're we both came up to the conclusion is like, I bet it's because they're so much more active right now and you're shaking them up because you're doing the parasite cleanse. Mm-hmm. Right. So you're you're really rattling their cage in there. And so then you're feeling it more. Today, I bet I heard him snort one time. One time. And it I mean telling you, it was all every 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 10 seconds so he's doing so good like in his life in general like it really like th- this really made a big difference to decrease that population of the parasites you know it changed all that that's a, such a obvious symptom right that that changed with him um but these guys are these are you know they're i'll take it from my my whole um you know my my approach to practice right i, I went over it last time which are the four, four hidden infections. I added a fifth since Italy. So, um, I, so it's parasites, hidden infection. We don't even know they're there mm-hmm. unless they're coming out of your skin, which sometimes happens, right? I've seen them crawl around in people's eyelids. I've seen them crawling in their legs, in the skin level, like crawling. So these guys are, are there. So unless, but most people they're in there, but you don't know they're there, right? Yeah. You don't really can't tell. And so, and then there's fungal can, can, candidiasis, which is then from overuse of antibiotics. Yeah. So that's systemic, right? We don't know it's there, but it's there and it's taken a toll on us, right? They're both, they're both really uh, challenging our immune system. So then it's wrestling the parasites. Now it's wrestling the fungal candida. And then it's wrestling the dental infections from the teeth that have been manipulated from either root canals or cavitations which are about nine, almost 90% always infected, right? So you can pretty much count on there's an infection in there, right? And then uh, the amalgam fillings, right? With dealing with that detox, constantly having to detox that mercury, right? So then you've got, uh, it's re-wrestling against that, you're wrestling against the vaccines, uh, you know, from the so-called the mRNA stuff, right? You've got that, that's something that really, you know, the mass population is dealing with right now and then but even the childhood ones right so we've got this constant attack on our immune system you know we got that that's wrestling with that and then the fifth one would be um emotional viruses or thought viruses right a thought virus is a looping thought that keeps people addiction is a great example right just loops it'll go away then it comes back again right it harbors itself then it comes back again because it gets triggered so these are all these um all these uh, hidden infections, I'll call them, right? But the parasites, if you just deal with those alone, man, our health will greatly increase. You know, it's going to increase so much because it's such a it's such a hard wrestling match for that immune system with these parasites. Depending on how many are in there, the the I mean, they can be enormous. I saw I saw pictures this morning of six foot long ones. This guy pulled out, changed his life. You know, when he got them out, it's like. He, now he can breathe, you know, and he's got like, he's got um, much better energy. Everything just works better. But these were just sucking his life away, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And your they're, overall, they're... The, the what you're mentioning now is very important, those hidden infections, because I believe, yes, it is possible to become infected from an actual parasite. But when someone is suffering from a genuine parasite, what I've seen, it's either the person is able to knock the parasite 
mm-hmm. out of their system or the parasite can potentially end up killing that person. So yeah. it's either you win or the parasite wins. But mm-hmm. if, uh, if your particular troubles include gut issues, inflammation, and so on and so forth, it is likely that when I mean, you could have had parasites in the past, but now it is likely a bacterial infection that is the culprit of, of what is going on. So, or someone may knowingly have scar tissues or injuries in the intestinal tract, for example, in colon from old pockets of E. coli, for example, or streptococcus or, you know, other triggers. So there is abundance of, of, of triggers that allow for that parasitic infection to, to become, um, become worse over time. And there is little, there's numerous variables such as, you know, low hydrochloric acid, a sluggish liver that I see with my clients, food sensitivities, and all of that, that if you don't attend to it, that original diagnosis or misdiagnosis, because sometimes we can't see it, is mm-hmm. going to take its, its, its toll even more so than what you have thought. So for mm-hmm. me, especially in my clients, like I, I do have, I do see people that come here. I don't diagnose them. They come with a diagnosis of some sort. And honestly, I treat them the same because I, I, I separate it to three steps. The step one would be ridding your diets from foods that can feed pathogens and create co-infection. That means I'm building nutritional equity. And there are some uh, trigger foods that I remove from their diet immediately. It's wheat and dairy and gluten and, and uh, wheat, dairy, and uh, processed sugars. Mm-hmm. Step two, I build the stomach acid back up. Mineral salts, uh, just upping their, their um, uh, pH level. Mm-hmm. Step three, we strengthen the good bacteria, the liver, and the gallbladder. Because what happens is, even if you try to rid yourself of parasites, they release toxins as they die off. And without proper liver support during this time, the body may respond to this elevated toxicity with uncomfortable detox symptoms, right? Like headaches and, and, uh, yeah. and other symptoms. So basically the symptoms can get worse before they can get better if we don't attend to the microbiome of that particular person. And I, what you just said, the emotional toxicity as well. So mm-hmm. we have to gradually work the way up for, for a, a healthy bioterrain in order for that initial diagnosis to not get worse. That, yeah. that has been my take in my clinic. Yeah, you know, I, I just, um, I approach it from, I, I do a program, I use Cellcore's program. It's a company um, that, uh, that's their main thing is, that's what they're really known for is the parasites. They're out of Idaho. And they, um, they there's, that, it covers that because we're covering the die off is important because the die off can make you sick, right? right? So you have to have your drainage pathways already yes. established and flowing or else you shouldn't do it. Yes. Right? And so there's a whole system on actually making sure that you're uh, eliminating properly. Because when they, I've had it before where they, I, I was, it wasn't a, wasn't a great idea. I took a trip to California from, from Louisiana and, um, and I was like, I'm going to do the parasite cleanse this week, you know? So I was I already wanted to do, so it was, a, it was a full moon. And so doing it on the road, not a great idea. Um, so I started getting like a little stuffy and little, little, uh, you know, um, you can get cold and flu symptoms from it because your body's trying to detox that stuff, right? Yeah. So then we cover the bases with that, um, with, um, with different supplements that go with that program, and it helps to eliminate gently so that you don't get caught up in that and get sick. And so it goes, it goes along with terrain theory in the way that, um, that there is no disease, right? Let's just get the terrain clean. Right. Because every, every, every uh, disease is a breakdown of the terrain. Uh, so there is no disease. So let's just, let's just, and then, and then the parasites, like I said, it's not a one shot deal. This is a maintenance program the rest of your life. If you really want to go after it. Right. Yeah. So every full moon, three to five days, I hit it and make sure that I decrease that population because they're going to come right back up again. Mm-hmm. Right. And so you need to, you need to balance that and, and try to keep that population down uh, in your body. Mm-hmm. So that there's, so that your immune system is less challenged, right? And so, but the, 
once we get rid of these things that are sucking the life out of people, then things just start working a lot better because the body knows how it knows it's perfect blueprint. Right. It knows exactly what to do, but it's just got all these guys in there sabotaging us, you know, or they're sabotaging our immune system. And so, uh, you know, that, and of course, as we know, like staying out of a fight or flight state and really keeping yourself centered so that you are, you're not in that fight or flight where your immune system shuts completely off. Yes. Right. Alphabetics covers that acupuncture can cover that. I test for that just the way I did in alphabetics in here. And I re I, I recheck that every time with people yeah. and make sure they're staying there. And this is the best people do, man, that I've ever seen is just keeping them in that state of growth and repair, 100%. but now taking it to a different level, getting rid of these infections, you know, and cleaning the terrain up. And that's all really I do. I don't look at, um, I, I've gotten, it's, it's more and more because this makes so much sense with, with um, oriental medicine, although they're a bit germ theory-ish as well. It's like you got symptoms, here's a drug. It's just an herbal drug. Right. Mm -hmm, right. And so, but yet at the same time, it's not toxic. It's not going to, it's not going to mess you up that way. Um, it's not uh, generally not addictive. Uh, you've got, and, but it can turn things around um, as opposed to just take this and, and cover the stuff up, you know, with the banding. Right. right. Or as opposed to, you know, regular pharmacotherapy drugs, mm -hmm. they can cause many uncomfortable side effects. And oh, yeah. it, can, it can be almost as bad as the parasitic infection, nausea, right. vomiting, headaches, sweat lights, all that. So it is, it is imperative that one will determine um, if they can use herbal, mm -hmm. you know, powerful antiparasitic properties instead. Like I, I like using oregano oil, um, black walnut. Um, it really depends on, on the person, but olive leaf, lemon balm. Uh, I do cat's claw, onio de gato a lot um, mm -hmm. because that this way you are, you know, you are eliminating those bugs and parasites without the, uh, the Herx, Herxheimer die-off reaction that is so common with antibiotics because the bioactive pharma compounds in the herb regulate the destruction of the pathogens. So it's it's at the level of the individual person that can tolerate. That's the beauty of Unio de Gato, Cat's Claw, just natural antibiotics. So I love using these. these yeah. Things. Well, that's another way that I approach it is um, I'll use these cell core uh, I'm trying to get the ingredients to, to, to tell you, but the, um, is that I use the blood electrification technique with acupuncture. Mm -hmm. And so when we do that, it's, it's from Bob, it's called the Bob Beck protocol. Um, Bob Beck was this, uh, really eccentric scientist, um, died in the late nineties, I believe. And he developed this system of blood electrification running four Hertz through the radial and ulnar artery. And then you see afterwards on before and after with uh, um, uh, like a dark field microscope, you'll mm -hmm. see the parasites just gone, right? Blood's beautiful. It's like it's the red blood cells are have an ionic charge, a negative charge on them now. They're bouncing off of each other. The neutral fills are cleaning up the garbage. You've got all this like it's beautiful. It's a beautiful ecosystem in there now. And so that kills parasites and heads a lot of them off at the pass because they're so microscopic. So then they can't grow into anything else, right? right? So hitting that helps prevent, and then we're getting rid of the big critters with the with the parasite cleanse, you know, with this like with these herbs. Yeah. So we can get rid of those. And and I tell you, they they oh, and then this the I I make this ionic colloidal silver water out of it too. So it's not colloidal silver water; it's ionic, and it has the negative charge that cleans the blood up too. That's silver was you know the silver spoon story, right? Mm -hmm. The, you know, born with a silver spoon because they were wealthy enough to have a silver spoon. So when the kid got sick, they put the silver spoon in his mouth to get him better. So mm -hmm. silver has been used with that, used with Korean hand acupuncture very regularly. You know, there's a, a lot of different uses for silver. And so this is actual silver that you're making this water with. And it's one of the original antibiotics that's not going to kill all the good stuff, yeah. you know. So you yeah. support it with that. You support it with the... Um, I support it with the blood electrification and keeping them balanced so that their bodies in growth and repair, and then it can manage all this stuff so much better. You know, what, what is the average age of people that suffer from parasitic infection you see in your clinic? Well, it, children are more susceptible. Mm -hmm. uh, 
younger children are more susceptible and uh what is the it's the dwarf um parasites that are the more common with the kids i believe and uh so the um so they get them but uh and and i tell you i had a uh i would like to show i'd like to show on the camera if i, if I have it here but i have this picture of this kid like a young kid he's like four or five years old and he's like he had belly aches right and he was so like sick all the time that he was vomiting bile and everything because nothing was going through and they they showed a pile it looked like a plate of spaghetti that was in his stomach yeah. li living in his gut somewhere in his gut right and so they so that's a little kid that grown that big mm -hmm. those suckers were that big in there you know so they it has no there's no age limit mm -hmm. and there's no no boundaries for these guys man they they anything that they can that's going to keep them alive and they can live their full life they can live 40 years or more in your body you know they can live forever in there and and they are doing a lot of destruction and and that's why i think like um uh ivermectin that's probably why it worked so well with people uh because it it's an anti-parasitic so what is it doing it's it's really accomplishing a terrain theory strategy and that is just uh, clean the terrain, decrease the population of the parasites that relatively increases your immune system a bit, its capabilities, right? It's not straining it. So it brings it down, crushes those guys, and that makes this relatively stronger, your immune system. So uh, that's, that's where I would, I go after it with this too. It's just relatively making the immune system stronger. And we have to know that this is a lifelong uh, venture, you know, this is not, like I said, not a one-time deal. Cleanses are not, I'm, I'm, I'm always doing a cleanse. <laughs> like I'm always doing a cleanse or I'm doing a fast right now. I'm doing a steak fast, right? I'm only eating steak. So, oh. so uh, it's you can gonna do be a, a lot of people's uh, fast. I know, you know, it's like, uh, you can fat, uh, that's, I'm joking, but you can fast. Like there's a, a, a bone broth fast, right? There's a water fast. It's just, that's what you're doing that during that time. Fasting in general, as we know, is fantastic, um, especially towards cancer and all this stuff. Right. Um, so we want to uh, constantly be cleaning our body. And like I did, uh, this year I did the fungal candiasis. It's uh, they call the McCombs plan. My buddy, uh, Dr. Jeff McCombs uh, from my hometown who I met in Marina Del Rey, you know, like, uh, you know, was, uh, he had yeah, the McCombs plan. That's four months long. You have to eat a certain way. You're sweating in a sauna six days a week, which I now I do anyway, and uh, six seven days, and uh, which is incredible for your heart health. The the research is is incredible on how much it reduces. 19 minutes, four to seven days a week can reduce the likelihood of sudden death heart heart uh, sudden heart death by about 60 to 65 percent. Right. So it really, really is impacted that way. So that's part of the program. So it's not easy. Right. You've got to really be after it. And uh, so the, your discipline is really key. Just your discipline period to be on these things. You know, I do a I'll do Dr. Schultz liver cleanse this year sometime. You know, I did. I do the parasite one once a month, you know, and then my daily diet and my daily cleaning the the the. Um, uh, the, the saunas are about terrain theory, right? It's detoxification. It's like it's constantly keeping the, keeping the terrain clean with, then I take the, there's activate, there's activated charcoal, right? But there's new technology with this activated charcoal, which is the carbon technology that they have for this, that you can take with food because you can't take that stuff with food. It robs the nutrition. So then that helps pull things through. So con every day I take that. Right. I don't take it just during the cleanse. So I'm constantly having something in that's drawing out this stuff, hitting um, uh, distilled water first thing in the morning just to pull things out, just to get your day started with that. All these things like that. But the consistency is important. You know, uh, we've gotten very spoiled in thinking, oh, you know, I just go to the doctor, take a bill. Everything's good. You know, no real health is is a lot is is consistent work and discipline. Yeah. And, and I feel that, you know, if, if we, if we talk about parasites that are there 
as inhabitors in someone's uh, terrain, it, it could often be bacteria related. So it is important to prioritize the health of the intestinal tract. Some mm -hmm. steps that I like mm -hmm. uh, suggesting to my clients that are really easy because obviously not everyone is going to do a lifelong mm -hmm. cleanse and six days in the sauna. So things that are more practical, like bringing in cilantro, bringing in parsley, uh, they're fantastic additions. They have cleansing properties to them, um, mm -hmm. incorporating dandelion greens, arugula, which are two very powerful leafy greens, mm -hmm. um, juicing fennel bulbs that are rich in vitamin C can create a wonderful healing drink, aloe vera water, um, celery juice, or any other uh, green juice that can raise the hydrochloric acid levels. And for, for the celery juice, particularly, it can actually support the bodies um, with raising mineral salts. Um, another juice is um, you can actually mix cilantro, kale, parsley, and fennel, but honestly, any green juice can do it. So little things like that, if someone wants to incorporate regular uh, drinking of lemon water, so making sure that the the pH is higher. Coconut water can make an amazing difference because of the natural electrolytes. Mm -hmm. Again, lemon water or lime water are excellent antiparasitic drink options. You can drink day to day. You don't have to do heavy plans to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are things that someone can do to strengthen their their bioterrains with my with my clients. That is what I do. Like I just have a client who's a marathon runner and we had to change her diet completely. She was diagnosed um, with a parasitic infection in particular. I think it was the um, uh, Giardia. So like a water um, in, a water uh, parasite. So I asked her, what is the water source? What is she drinking? And she said she's drinking these, you know, uh, bottles from Costco. So I immediately recommended just making sure she gets shower filters and I like Berkey. So changing her water. And honestly, two weeks after she started that, this particular protocol with, without anything crazy, she already felt better. She's like, I'm vivid. I feel I have energy. She's like, I'm a better mother. I'm a better wife. What is this? Mm -hmm. What we are doing really is cleaning her bio terrain and what you said so brilliantly, reducing her stress level as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is how I collect my data. It's like I didn't even have to get in there so much. We just cleaned her up. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. And you know, it's not, it's not like it's it, you know, genius is in the simplicity. I always use uh I always use satisfaction uh from the stones as a great example of the simplicity uh -huh. and the genius, right? Keith Richards was doesn't even remember coming up with bom bom bana bom ba bana bana right? He like fell asleep while he was playing, but he was recording it. No. Yeah, he's going through his recordings. He's like, oh man, this is cool, man. I think I'm gonna draw this, man. And uh, so he, so it turns into satisfaction, right? So it's genius in the simplicity. And so the more simple we keep it, there's just simple things to do. It's like, okay. let's just clean the train. That's it. There is no disease. Everything else is for profit. I agree. Right? The germ theory is built around sales for pharmaceutical industry. And uh, that's just the way it is. And that's the way the schools are taught, um, funded by people that have interest in that. So we want to be like, hey, let's just get down to basics here and let the body take care of itself because the body's so brilliant. Yes. It really knows what to do once you give it, you, you clean it up. It's like, oh, yeah, that's all I wanted, you know, because we're dealing with enough stressors in the world that we're not in control of, like the air we breathe. I think I said this in the last one. There's... There's a place right at the Mississippi River here in Louisiana they call Cancer Alley. Yeah. You know, I treated a whole bunch of people with cancer over at this other clinic I was at. It was like, it was just regular. And it's like, they're, they're just, um, the plastic factories there, you know? And you know all the talk about plastics being in our bodies so much mm -hmm. now, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine we living, breathe. Right, we breathe living right there and breathing it like yeah. more than anybody, right? Yeah. So we got to, like, there, there's these are things we're not in such control of, but we're really in control of, the music we listen to, the food we eat for the most part. And we have to put ourselves in a position to be able to, let's, let's, we want this, let's work. I can't afford that, that, that food. I'm like, figure, let's figure it out. Yeah. Let's figure out the best way to go with that, you know? And um, 
so when like the steak I eat, right? Like I don't eat, always get it organic. So I, I, I bless it a whole lot more now <laughs> and like <laughs> harmonize with my body because, because I, I don't know, you know, what's in there. So I just want good stuff in, bad stuff out, you know? I love that. <laughs> but, you know, I wanted to show you, I found these, um, yeah. uh, hopefully nobody's eating, but, uh, I don't know if, hopefully you can even see it, but can you see that clearly? Oh, yes. It's like a bowl of spaghetti, spaghetti. right? Wait, let me, pin you. let me pin you. Let me pin you. Yes. It came out of that little boy's stomach. What, they drained it? Like, how did they, I don't, know how they got it? It? I don't know if you threw it up or what, but they, uh, oh but that God. was in the stomach, you know? Boy, four years old. You know, so he, it, he kept complaining about pain? He was in, he was in extreme pain, screaming all the time. He was wow. vomiting bile. I mean, it was looked really bad, right? And so, and I, and I'll this will this will go into other things. This girl got bit by a mosquito uh, under her eye. Yeah. It ended up crawling in her eyelid right there, and then it got down into her lip. Wow. And they extracted it surgically. Wow. And it, that was that was the critter right there, right? So it was a parasite. So these are really good examples to know of. Women's yeah. grief. I got research on all of these. All of these uh, articles here, we, we, there's, I have research articles for this peer-reviewed research. So um, woman, uh, woman's grapefruit-sized liver cancer tumor was actually a parasite. So they thought it was liver cancer. It was a parasite. Wow. So the same thing happened with this lady that had breast cancer. They said it was breast cancer. It was actually a tapeworm larva and breast cancer. Crazy together right so what came first the chicken or the egg we don't know exactly. right so there is uh and which then leads to parasites can lead to cancer mm. there's research on this parasite is that backwards on your camera no no it's perfect so um parasites can lead to cancer mm. um so it's like how many um misdiagnoses are there mm -hmm. you know because they look like tumors anyway mm. a lot of them look like tumors you know and the the and also the um you know they they cloak themselves right they're so clever right they, they can just bob and weave they just, whatever you throw at it they bob and weave right and then i'm because I, I had this discussion with an md friend of mine and she says you know what my ivermectin really gets rid of these parasites with people i checked the blood work they're a lot better i go it doesn't really find it though mm. <laughs> it doesn't find it that much they're still there this is just a thing to assume that you should be doing. And and some can, like Dave, for example, when he took ivermectin when he had COVID, he felt uh, uh, he felt so distressed in his stomach, he mm -hmm. didn't want to take it again. So again, you say ivermectin, but those that are more sensitive, like, you know, and Dave is not the sensitive type, but he felt great stomach pains that he just didn't finish it. Yeah. It's they were probably it's probably really messing with them and they were fighting yeah. against it right so they're just like that guy's nose it's like all of a sudden they start coming up again when he started taking it during the full moon yeah. so they're like ah, what's going on you know however they yeah. whatever they whatever they say to each other whatever <laughs> language they speak <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't speak a uh, parasite at this point. oh you don't no, I don't. We should add it to the list. You know, us Americans, you know, <laughs> speak one language. I just don't speak parasite <laughs> alien yet. Speak um, the universal one. I go. I, English yeah, is fine. Yeah, the the language of love. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's another one here. The woman's brain tumor turns out to be a parasite growing in her head, right? So there's there's another one there, and this it just goes on and on with these, and so there's a lot of good research on this. But these guys, you know, got it down well. And, and I tell you, you know, you can, you will see them coming out. If you look for them, you're going to see them. The proofs, the proofs in the, in the potty. So, you know? so when you say, if you look for them, they're going to come out. So I know that most will test via fecal. Am mm -hmm. I assuming correctly? Mm -hmm. Right. But sometimes they're mashed with so many other things. How can you, I mean, I know that only 10% of the labs are really accurate. Like, how do you know that you're dealing with parasites and not simple worms? Well, they are the parasites though. And those are, those need to be coming out too. But I mean, you'll, they literally encourage you to, to dig 
not with a stick you dig through your stool and you'll see them i saw i see them pulling them out of the toilet like this that there are parasites and not worms they're tapeworms are the long okay. ones yeah so there's they yeah. Worms, there's larva there's all these there's nematodes there's all these parasites that'll come out the ones coming out of their nose i mean and you'll, you'll see that they're parasites they have little things on there and it's not like a normal stool and they they come out like by the droves when you do that cleanse so yeah. you know they're coming out and i'm like i'd like to check it like in the middle of the month before that but you can see that there's nothing in there but it's like you can see them right away and yeah. it's uh it's really uh but they come out everywhere they'll come out in the urine as well um but they uh but they are definitely they they're not they're not welcomed guests yeah, but that's why I can feel that I feel as a practitioner that we can live with warmth, but we can't live with real parasites. I mean, yeah. you know, Bartonella, Babesia, Bartonella is a bacteria, but real parasites, it's either you or the parasite. And we're using like many, many times we're using an umbrella of parasites to talk about those worms. And I feel that the worms are not the ones that give us neurological symptoms, right? There are there, and getting rid of them will not necessarily make you feel better. Any brain fog, chronic fatigue, uh, fibromyalgia symptoms will continue if you don't attend to your own bioterrain and you know attend to the co-infection of bacteria and pathogens that are probably coexisting along with those worms. Well, that's where it comes. That's where the train theory again comes in, and that is just thinking. Let's just clean it up. And then this stuff can start working again. And yeah. so like with the like blood electrification and so in the uh, ionic colloidal silver water, that kills the, the bad microbes in the blood, too. Right. So it's really it's really like heading the stuff off at the pass um, and then taking care of the microbiome. All of that, of course, yeah. you're going to do. But from the beginning, I think getting rid of these critters is the number one. Because otherwise, your body is just always battling. It's always battling that yeah. first, right? And uh, and, it, and that's the thing too. You said the real big parasites that are going to kill you. Yeah, but the thing is, is most people don't have that necessarily. That's exactly. So when I hear parasites, I hear okay, this is you know, huge. Huge, but we're talking worms. And as a child, I saw worms in my stool. As a ch I remember seeing crawly creatures. I know it's disgusting, mm -hmm. but I have to share. Where else will I share it? Uh, mm -hmm. I see crawly creatures in my stool, but mm -hmm. and slowly they disappear. But I remember like being intrigued by what I saw. So that's why I actually I teach my kids to look at their stool. Like, is there mm -hmm. anything there? What do you see? Even if it's pieces that are undigested, corn or whatever, because you can tell a lot by someone's stool. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're they're um uh they they come out they come out of there when the, you kill them and they come out so that's their car carcasses coming out when you do it but I mean I've seen them with dogs and everything and they're just hanging out of there alive like that. Um there's one like there's a one floating around about a bear recently that supposedly had I mean they were enormous, you know, coming out of them. But it's uh it, it's just the thing is it's like most people have them in there, yeah. but it's enough to where those 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 critters are really happy in there. Yeah, you know they're happy to be in there, and they're hiding, they're hibernating, they're just living off of you. They are sucking energy out of you, whether you yeah. like it or not. That's what I'm saying. It's a hidden infection. An yeah. acute parasitic infection is not a hidden infection. Yeah, it's a you or the parasite. I'm yeah. talking about just your day to day. Yeah. Got them in there, don't even know it. Yep. You know? Yep. Yeah. But yet it's still uh, causing all sorts of issues in there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I also see a lot of like those that are, you know, amount of byproduct of EBV, Epstein-Barr virus, then 99.9% .9 of the population, even allopathic doctors admit it, we have. And I feel mm -hmm. that a lot of times what we call a parasitic infection is actually EBV byproduct virus that expels in the, in the liver and intestinal tract that can lead a practitioner to believe that his or her patient are suffering from parasitic infection where, where there's a problem with that diagnosis. And it's actually the person is battling Epstein by virus that can easily expel the abundance of byproduct that get misdiagnosed, right. Mm -hmm. As a, as a parasitic infection. Um, 
but yeah, I feel I, it, 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 it is a hidden problem and I agree with you. It needs to be handled with, with all modalities, the nutrition modality, the, the mental modality, the, the, the supplements, adding supplements in, um, but, yeah. for, but for, you know, the way I approach it first is clean it. Yeah. Clean that and clean those infections out. And then, like I said, things can then take care of themselves. Then they've got your back to that perfect blueprint and your body can really take over. Say, okay, I got it from here, you know, but yeah. like the Epstein-Barr virus, that's another example. Possibly, I don't want to deliver um, uh, uh, inaccurate information, but it's uh it is rumored that it is from the childhood vaccines, mm -hmm. right? And that's where it started. And so why does everybody have it, <laughs> you know? And it's like, uh, everybody seems to have it. You know, I, I had mono when I was a kid, mm -hmm. you know? And so I have it, that's easy, but yeah. Shingles, you know? Yeah. So, um, but there's, these are things to consider. Yeah. You know? And uh, what we're doing, what we're doing in the medical world all needs to be questioned. Mm -hmm. And especially after this last, uh, ho this whole last uh, circus that's been going on, you mm -hmm. know, so uh, now all the proof is coming out and uh, they're like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Question you know? everything. Yeah, that will be the, uh, the message. Question everything and really make a decision that is best for your family. But it's important, I think, on both sides to not be judgmental. I always say to my friends who are, you know, belong to one stream, that illusion of separation is really an illusion because at the end of the day, the research is available. It's right here. It's called the Internet. Go to people that you trust and see what it is that you feel is best for your family. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, and it's not that easy. Not everybody's in this business. Yeah. You know? And and then you find it, it's a challenge too. It can be a challenge. What I found mostly with family members um, is a challenge of them, like listening to you. Right. Yeah. My, and as practitioners as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> they don't listen. Yeah. It's like, um, you do this for a living. I do this for a living. Yeah. <laughs> What aren't you hearing here? You know, totally, totally, totally. You know, so I, I would, um, that, that's a, that's, that's part of life. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that this is such a huge, it's a, such a huge topic. And, um, my friend Liz, uh, actually turned me on to this, uh, years ago and got me, like, I wasn't even paying attention to the, um, the parasites and, She's like, man, you got to check this out, you know? And then she started really doing it. Like, she's like, you should tell me like, then we had like stories of our parasites, you know, <laughs> going back and forth, coming out and everything. And it's like, man, what did you feel? So we really explored it deeply, but it's like, uh, man, I mean, what a, what a great thing to get onto. And if, if there's just one thing that you address, if they just address this, people will be so much healthier. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just this, just this one topic alone. No. Well, hopefully we've helped some of our listeners to uh, <laughs> clear out the topic of parasites. Um, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Carter, for being our guest again. It's always a pleasure having you on our show. Yeah, well, it's uh, always nice to see you, and uh, I'm glad uh, glad we got to do it. Um, yeah, lots lot of new things coming up. Uh, so if I see you again on here, we'll we'll have have some uh, exciting things to talk about as well. That so. would be amazing. Always a pleasure. Okay. Uh, right, send, the, send David my best and the, and, and the children. Will and, do. Uh, all right. All and right, thank everyone. you. Thank you again. Have a great weekend. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. Bye. I know. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.